Happy Friday and welcome to today's multi-social live stream. Uh, we're going to continue our series on Veeam Backup from Microsoft Office 365. Uh, I'm Rick and I'm joined by Corinne. How you doing today, Corinne? I'm doing great. It's again Friday and we have more awesome VBO stuff to bring to you. It, it's a great time to talk about this. The Microsoft 365 space is incredible. In fact, uh, a week from today, we're, uh, or next week, I should say, uh, there's a SharePoint Fest event in Chicago. Veeam's going to be there. So M365 is the thing to do nowadays. And Corinne, I really like how you you pushed me to kind of like make a make a series about Veeam Backup for Microsoft Office 365. And I think uh, I think you're having fun with this. Yeah, um, I wouldn't say I necessarily twisted your arm, but uh, yes, Office 365 or Microsoft 365 is a huge topic, and it's one of our fastest growing products, period, at Veeam to date. Indeed, indeed. For good reasons. So, so we mentioned that Veeam's going to be at SharePoint Fest in Chicago next week, but you know what? Where are you from? Leave that in the chat on the stream let us know the city and the state that you're in we're going to light the application up today we love doing that on these live streams so we've got our production team up in the northeast of the u.s in the southeast of the u.s we've got uh, corinne and i are in ohio in the central part of the u.s we got producers in europe helping us out in romania we got end-to-end -end coverage here today but we want to incorporate you so drop in the application in the chat what city, what state that, that you're coming from, uh, what country, and we'll uh, light it up. So that should be fun. All right. You ready to get into it, Corinne? Born ready. Born ready. Okay. <laughs> so our topic today, it's part three of our series on Microsoft 365 Backup, Search, Compare, and Restore. So we're going to walk into that at the end of the session, but we're going to start this session out much like the way we did the other ones so far. And, you know, for those of you watching for the first time, first of all, welcome. But uh, Corinne, walk us through what we're looking at here. This is, you know, Microsoft 365 and our Veeam backup product for it. But tell us about all the components that are going on here. So we start off in the center of this chart with Veeam Backup for Microsoft Office 365 Server. And this is really just the heart of all the communications, the aggregations of the jobs, the schedules, and the command center, if you will. And off of this, you get all of your resources put in and where everything's going to go out to. Starting with the top, we see you're able to do on-prem as well as Office 365 only and hybrid infrastructures all aggregated through the same console. Once they've been brought into the same console, you're able to send them out to whatever type of infrastructure component that makes sense, whether you need to offload to additional proxies or if you have different types of repositories, whether you're running an on-prem repository, some type of S3 compatible object storage, or even just a file share that you need to send that data off to. But it doesn't just end there. We move over to having so many different ways to restore your data through our four Restore Explorers, which is actually the highlight of today's topic today. Yeah, and I think that the restore is really that super valuable uh, part of the offering. I know we we spoke to someone this week and they're like, backup's cool, but restore is more important. And so those explorers, which are going to be the 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 kind of the highlight of today's episode, and this is a good way to get started. So let's like let's like kind of riff a little bit about the history of the Veeam explorers and uh, piece of trivia, Rin. Do you know which was the first Veeam explorer? I want to say, was it AD? I believe it was Exchange. Exchange. Um, I, I, okay. Actually, I should have known the or answer. Or just before. our product or VBR, too? <laughs> well, well, that's right. It was, v, it was Veeam Backup and Replication, and that is actually very uh, important because um, Exchange and SQL and Active Directory and SharePoint and now on the M365 space with Teams, this is an area that, first of all, is a great opportunity for Veeam to have what I call shared technology. And what I mean by that is an email is an email. And we, back where you showed us, it could be in a hybrid deployment. You know, SharePoint is a little bit different here and there in the different versions as well. But I think Exchange was the first one because it was really hard to do UAIR type recoveries uh, for Exchange back in the day, right? So um, long piece of history, but that's just because I've been here that long and I've seen that develop. 
You now, know, I actually remember that. Uh, so this entire process, you had to spin up the machine from a backup, log into that machine, and then use native exchange tools in order to do a recovery of just a single email attachment. It was fantastic and awful. <laughs> fantastic. Well, now I'm not going to knock like V4, V5, Veeam at the time, but the reality is the Explorers really revolutionized application item recovery, in my personal opinion. And what I mean by that is the ability to drive an application recovery is kind of like it's this perfect shot, right? Because you don't want to over restore stuff. So the Explorers do just that. They put all the intelligence on the restore in specific application terms. So there are some for Active Directory and uh, SQL Server, but for M365, uh, are there three or four? I can't remember. How many explorers are there? Four now. And we'll cover all four in this session. Surprise! We will. All right, the producers just let me know that the map location is ready. So let's take a quick look at the map. And I've been told there's a lot of people from Middle Italy on the line, which is great. So we've got Canada. I can see that a mile away. We've got, uh, I think that's Colorado. We've got Georgia. We've still got Ohio. Maine. Oh, no, it's Canada. Again, I guess I could look at the list here. Connecticut, Canada. Oh, Ottawa. I love Ottawa. It's one of my favorite cities in Canada. Yeah. Uh, we've got over in Europe. We've got Belgium, Turkey, Italy. And uh, thank you. Actually, I just sent something to somebody in Belgium. Hopefully, it comes today. Uh, down south in EMEA, we've got uh, South Africa in the house. Welcome there. I don't have many designs in my home office, but I bought it in the airport in South Africa. And then uh, still waiting for the other part of the world to tune in. You know, usually somebody from India comes in, but we'll see. Again, let us know in the feed where you're from. And we'll light up the map. And then I'm, I'm going to give you a kind of a random question, Corinne, of the list of those places. You know, once we're clear and able to go traveling, where do you want to go most on that list? You know, actually, I'm a big fan of trying to get over to Italy. There's like, I want to do an entire tour all the way up the boot from toe to top. <laughs> Don't call it the boot over there. It's a peninsula. OK, but anyways, we get you. Uh, Italy's a great place. We uh, we've had a couple of Veeam matters there. A great Veeam team there as well. All right, cool. Back to the content. So tell us about those four explorers, Corinne, before we get in kind of that search and compare uh, and recover conversation. So each explorer is meant for the application that you're restoring that data for. So. To put it in simple terms, if you're working with the Exchange Explorer, yes, you can restore data back to your original environment, but when you're working with any type of export option, you're actually exporting as like an MSG file or a PST file, which are the types of formats that you expect to get when you're working with Exchange. But as you move down the line with SharePoint, you actually get lists, documents, and items. OneDrive looked exactly like a file explorer with all your file folder structures. And Teams, you're seeing your channels, your tabs, your posts, your files, things that you would expect to find in those applications. Now, we also tailor each explorer so that they have the same look and feel. Though you're restoring the specific data for the application, you don't have to be an application administrator in order to get this data back to your end user in the format that they expect to get it back in. Yeah, I love the way you set that up because the, the real takeaway here is that it's very application focused, application native. And these four different explorers, so I love my numbers, right? They give you 40 different recovery scenarios. Again, all about the recovery. So having that versatility to get out of a problem and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, in order left to right, the exchange and then the SharePoint and OneDrive and then the Teams, those are the order in which they were incorporated into the Veeam Backup and Replication product, or a Veeam Backup for Microsoft Office 365 product. Am I correct on that? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, yeah cool. Look at that. I do listen sometimes. I got the product wrong, but I got the order right. All right, so tell us about this data, right? Once we've captured it, and in the previous series, I think it was uh, session number two, we talked about the capture and the components, especially the repositories. But Corinne, once we have it, what can we do with that data? 
So one of the things that you run into, you're going to have different policies based on what you're backing up. So maybe you have a gold tier, a silver tier, maybe you have backups for just HR or finance. Well, you can actually start this job restore scope based on either the job. So you can actually select a job and only have the restore scope brought up for that job for an entire organization. You can even select multiple organizations if you just want to cover everything from your infrastructure if you have multiple organizations added into the same console but you have the flexibility to define the scope that you want to search and restore through once you've defined what type of scope you'd like to restore from then you can even choose whether you're going to just do the latest point in time or a specific point in time so maybe you have an e-discovery process that it has to be done uh, five days ago is when the data needed to be gathered from. Well, you can actually tailor the Explorer to start as if the backup was taken five days ago. That's kind of sneaky and tricky and awesome all at the same time. But um, one thing that really sticks out to me in that, Ren, that you spoke about is this notion of e-discovery. And I can tell you in my own professional experience before I was at Veeam and, and I talk to customers all the time. This comes up, e-discovery, and I want to really be really clear with the audience here that if you don't have an e-discovery solution in place and then you're in an e-discovery situation, that can be a really kind of cumbersome thing. These explorers looking through the data types in M365 and then also some of the other explorers on-prem really can be super helpful for you to kind of answer some of these questions really, really quickly. So we're going to show you that in the demo. But, you know, e-discovery is, is more of a business problem and a business solution, a business need, I guess is the right word. So if you don't have something in, in place, this is really something we might want to pay attention to. Good stuff. Okay, we got the data. We want to look through it, but you know the most complicated thing, am I right, is restoring data, or am I over uh, complicating that as I normally do? Um, I'd say if you're using another product, maybe our restore process is literally one, two, three. Define your scope, select what you want to restore, and then how you want to restore it. And it's a very intuitive explorer. If you can use Windows like File Explorer, I am confident that you can use our Restore Explorer for any of our applications. Yeah, I think that the explorers are very, very easy to use. In fact, there's this one individual on Reddit. Uh, I love Reddit. It's just brutally honest, but the, the individual said Meme is the most idiot-proof backup software he's ever used. And I think that that's really important because the, the when the time comes, when we need to drive a recovery, that is uh, that's really important. So um, let's see. We I've been told that the map is ready again. So before we transition over to demo, let's uh, let's take a look at the map. We've had some new entries added. I see Mexico is in the house. Bienvenido, says uh, No, uh, it's, it's tarde. Not not yet night. So thank you for that. We got Texas. Cool. Oh, Illinois. Nice. Nice. New York. Nice. Nice. Uh, we've got, uh, yeah, a couple more U.S. states that popped in, so I appreciate that. And again, uh, really appreciate everyone attending. Nice size crowd today. Let's jump over into Europe, see if we got anything new. Oman and Malaysia, we'll get to that in a second. We got um, Germany, we've got uh, that would be Sweden, uh, we got Spain. Bienvenido, say esta noche for you. Yes, that would work over there. Um, good, we got uh, an additional uh, country, I think that's Nigeria, if my map, map skills are right. There's Oman, and then we've got someone over in the other side, Malaysia. Wow. No better place to be Saturday morning than watching LinkedIn Live. So thank you for that. It's uh, right at midnight, I think, for y'all over there. Welcome, everyone. Again, we love seeing the, the big different uh, groups log in. So let's go ahead and let's do the demo. Uh, Corinne, when you're ready, let's, uh, let's look at these search, restore, compare, and export type uh, functionalities. Sure. Uh, I've already got the lab up and I have it ready to go. So to start off with, to kind of clarify what we were talking about of how you can start that restore scope. So you can either select the job 
that you'd like to do a restore from and use the explorer up at the top and you can see I have all of the explorer options because all of these different types of applications are being backed up within this explorer. But if I wanted, I could actually come over here to the organization and if I had multiple jobs, everything that's defined within that organization, I can do that same start for a restore. And organizations, if I select that and I had multiple organizations here, they would also allow me to start up a restore scope based off of all of the organizations. Now, here is where we can see the latest point in time, which will automatically do whatever the last backup for this item is, or for if you have multiple jobs, whatever that job scope's last backup was, will be included here or you can do a specific point in time and any time within the backup history, which I've had this server since last Friday when we start, if you were here, you watched me make the job. So I have backups all the way back from the 16th and I can select any of these days in between that I've completed a backup within. Now I've already started up some of these below and we'll kick it off with the exchange. Now with Exchange, you can see here, it looks a lot like a file explorer. So you can come in, see the email archive box, uh, calendars, contacts, and some of the things about our contacts. Again, if you've been following along the series, you can actually exclude your contacts and calendars from your retention that you defined within the job so that if you did create maybe a contact two years ago, it would still be within your backup if you deleted it yesterday. Now our advanced find, which is our e-discovery like type of feature, it's actually a lot closer to say a content search inside of Office 365 rather than the traditional core or advanced e-discovery, but we go based off of really more fields than I am aware of existent inside of an email. Yeah, it's very powerful, uh, that search there, Corinne, and I, I think you can build some very, very specific criteria that can like be a question that you need to answer. And that's actually a good segue to the question that uh, Jason D dropped in. And I'll read this out. And Jason's Question is a little bit pointed to the future. Sounds like you've used it a little bit, Jason, but his question is, is there any plan to allow search across multiple points in time at once? And let me change the question a little bit and say, or a trick or a workaround. So if you start up a restore process, you're actually doing a restore based off of all data existent in your database at that time. So if you did, a uh, month's worth of backup, but you have years worth of data. If all of that data was backed up within that month's retention period, if you selected today, you're seeing everything that's within that backup, not just from that day, but everything within that backup. The ability to select a previous date allows you to do something maybe for compliance. If you had to, as of the 15th of what was everything in your infrastructure at that time, that's what the point in time restore is for. Yeah, it sounds like it's really uh, very versatile, really. And just, you know, Jason, if you haven't used it, I'm not sure uh, if you have, just play with it, right? You'll find that it, it really um, definitely can help you out. And, you know, if we got any other questions, drop them in. The producers are picking that up and bringing it to us. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good, Corinne. Anything else in there? So we were talking about the search and the restore features, but one of the favorite and defining features that we have within here is something called compare with production. What this will do is if I'm using modern authentication, it's going to have me do an application authentication. So I'm going to copy this code and then I have to do a device login. I put that code in. Again, if you have basic authentication, it's just going to use your basic authentication password. But if you have multi-factor authentication configured and you have to do multiple steps in order to sign in, then you can use this and it'll allow you to do those multiple steps and connect. Now you can compare properties, you can compare email boxes, anything that could be missing from your production environment that is existent inside of this field you can tell it to either show or hide when you're comparing to that production environment, which I think is a very powerful feature 
especially when it comes to say SharePoint or OneDrive and you have different versions of a file um, within the explorers. Yeah, that's really important because again, the 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 you don't know if it, the items changed, right? You know, it doesn't make sense to restore it if it's the same, right? You can get some insight and some visibility into that as you showed. Good question just came in from Edris. He says, haven't used M365, and uh, I even have the answer to this one, Corinne. His question is, what are the target repository options for Microsoft 365 backups? And Edris, definitely check out, uh, was it last week, uh, number two in the series when we talked about the, the components, which includes the proxies and repositories. But uh, And even configured them for you. Ah, and even the configuration of them. And it's really important to note that, you know, with the object storage in there, this can be a very large backup uh, type. So definitely to keep in the mind and uh, keep in mind. All right, so what about exporting or restoring the data, Corinne? So within the Explorer, you have many different options, whether you do just want to restore back to the original location. You can even choose to restore to new locations here and exporting. And if you notice, when we're exporting or saving these files, we see a little PST at the end, or you can go to an MSG type of file, depending on what your end user expects to get back from this uh, export. Now, here's actually one of my favorite features. It's actually the send to option. So the send to option will allow you to email directly from this console an item that you need to give to an end user by just typing in their email address and it'll send this file as an attachment out to that end user, meaning you don't have to download, re-upload, and move over. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten requests for restores where it's not that that data is gone. It may be that they don't remember where they put that file. And this way you can use an advanced search find that file for them and then send it to their email box instead of the original location where it's going to be lost in the abyss still. That's really powerful. So many ways to move this data around. And when we mentioned 40 recovery options with Beam Backup for Microsoft Office 365, these are just a few. So this is really, really good stuff. And, uh, you know, the producers are telling me that we've got a, an updated map. Uh, so final call, if we uh, want to get that in. We're going to go uh, to that momentarily. But the one thing I want to highlight is that, you know, Corinne, one thing we didn't talk about too much yet is, you know, especially with Edris's question, you haven't used Microsoft Office 365, for example. How easy is it to get started and try this, uh, this backup product? So it actually is one of the fastest installations of any type of Office or Microsoft 365 backup on the market. We've had independent analysts have to do tests. And one of the things that I hear consistently is we were shocked at how fast we got through our tests because it didn't take that long to get set up and configured initially or figure out how to do something or find a certain feature that was necessary in their test. And if you're like not sure how to do this or if you're not even backing up your m365 data the free edition can let you back up up to 10 users completely free so that's an easy way to get started and i'd recommend you go watch number one in the series and that was the installation and that base configuration so it can be from the cloud marketplaces and build your own cloud or even on-prem so really easy to get started all right, the producers tell me that the map location is ready and we got some new entries. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. Let's check it out here. So uh, we have um, NYC, or at least New York. Welcome, uh, New York State. I'm gonna go to Central New York, just really good state park up there. Let's see, Michigan, welcome. I used to live up there, guys, welcome. And let's see, we've got Colorado. I know a nice guy out there. Appreciate that, welcome everyone. And then let's go over to Europe. Oh wow, we've got France, we've got Portugal, we've got Swiss, welcome. Good additions and uh, uh, awesome. And then we've got Kenya now uh, in India. I knew you were gonna come in here, India. We can't go a LinkedIn Live or Facebook Live without India. And Costa Rica came in on the other side. So wow, thank you all for letting us know where you're from. One of these days we're gonna break the record, Corinne. I don't know how we're gonna do it, but we're gonna do it. All right, so I mentioned the free community edition, but there's also the uh, free trial. What's the difference with a free trial versus community edition, Corinne? 
So it's actually the exact same installation no matter what uh, you download. It all depends on if you want to apply a license or not. So you get the exact same features from the free edition for your 10 users as you do um, downloading and applying for an enterprise type of environment. It's all about your sizing. Got it. So start with that maybe community edition and then the free trial for more users. And then uh, go to the web page here, talk to your Veeam person. Oh, Kuwait was also on here. Sorry, I missed it when the map was up. So I appreciate that. Um, well, awesome. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and get ready to wrap. One thing I want to highlight is next week we've got uh, on Monday the uh, ransomware remediation series with uh, Dave Russell and Edwin Wajima. We're going to um, go the next step on that and ransomware remediation, really a lot of good advice there. Monday, noon, stream, same place. And then a, a last minute question just came in from Ed, uh, Edris again. Afis, uh, backing it up as a service, uh, Corinne, any advice for Edris on that? Yeah, so we actually are able to deploy directly from the marketplace on AWS and Azure, as well as be an extension for IBM Cloud. But pretty much anywhere that you can set up a Windows machine, you can actually install our software. So that may include Google and some of those other private providers. And if you want to do completely hands-off software as a service, you can actually move to any of our uh, cloud providers that also offer many additional features. They may have custom-built portals and things that they've tapped into the back-end API suite to offer to their end users. Hashtag VCSP all the way, indeed. All right, and then also a week from today. So I mentioned that uh, Edwin and Dave are going to do the ransomware remediation series on Monday. But a week from today, Melissa and Aaron Murphy on the product strategy team are going to talk about cybersecurity as well. So we've got really good stuff coming. Next week is like ransomware and cyber week. So it's definitely going to be some great content for you. All right. Hey, Corinne, thank you so much for continuing the series here. we got to think of uh, what's going to be number four. What do you think? Um, I was looking at where do we deploy and how do we get it deployed there? Hmm. I was thinking also maybe the reporting. Lift shift. Yeah, there you go. What That's is it? an option. The reporting, you know. Well, maybe. We'll see. Uh, I've not used the reports. It's something I've been wanting to check out. But anyways, thank you so much for joining me here today, Corinne. Thank you for having me. All right, everyone. And on behalf of the Veeam Global Marketing Team and the producers who have uh, promoted and produced this event, I really appreciate everyone uh, helping us with the content. And that concludes today's stream. Thanks for watching, everyone.